Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Here it is, our, our 10th session. We're talking about power encounters. Power encounters. Uh, we spent a couple nights talking about power as it relates to preaching and singing and supernatural conviction. We spent a couple of nights talking about power as it relates to healing and signs and wonders in terms of uh, natural creation or physical bodies. Now we're going to take tonight looking about power, same thing, same power, as it relates to uh, God releasing finances supernaturally. This is part of the entertainment of God's kingdom. And I tell you, it is divine entertainment for the, for the setup, the timing, the personalities, the need to line up just right, and then the provision comes, and we go, whoa! And the, and, and the Lord goes, there you go again, there, it's happening again. And, you know, when we give ourselves to these things, whatever dimension it is, any dimension of love, it just is exciting. I just love all of these, but there, we need to think about economics as power encounters, meaning our hearts are fascinated. They swell with joy and we go, it's what I, what happens to me. I go, I really believe it this time. I mean, I know it's true this time. That's what happens inside of us. And the Lord's answer is, I meant it along to do that. It's as, there's as much intimacy in the realm of God using you in economics as there is in God using you in healing, as it is in God using you to speak His word or sing His word. It's, it's the same intimate flow to where whatever end of the equation you're on, whether you're the vessel uh, giving it or receiving it, you get wowed. The whole process gets wowed, and that's what this is about. You have to understand the economic dilemma and supernatural provision orchestrated by God at the end of the age is about wowing His end-time bride. It's not about us being in fear going, oh no, oh no. It's about the end time bride being wowed by the most dramatic global scenario of crisis and supernatural intervention with a, uh, uh, with a application a multitude of times to individuals. Not just, it's not just a global dimension of a big picture. Individuals are wowed as well as the earth is wowed as they are uh, participating and saying yes to the grace of God. So, Deuteronomy 8.18, this is one of the famous ones, and it should be. And you shall remember the Lord your God. Remember Him, for He's the God that gives you power. There it is. It's like signs and wonders, power to get wealth, power to get wealth to establish the covenant. Now, when we remember the Lord, we're remembering Him as a rich God. We're not just remembering Him as kind. We're, We're remembering Him as like really having a lot of money. Remember the Lord your God, not just his kindness, he is really, really wealthy. He has incredible amounts of money. He has more than Bill Gates. He has a lot more money than Bill Gates. See, we uh, maybe maybe sometimes we'll meet a rich person and we will remember, wow, that's the wealthiest man in the world. But he says, remember, here's the Lord speaking through Moses, remember me as the God that has all the money too. Don't forget that part. And remember, it's a part of the covenant. Uh, It's the covenant to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. It's the covenant to get your sins forgiven. It's a covenant to have the power of God living in you, to be in intimacy with God. It's a covenant for the wealthy God to wow his bride through the way he administers wealth. And there's so many dynamic things he's planning. He is as creative as you can. We can imagine the limits of his creativity to get this wealth released in different ways. And there's going to be a great transfer of wealth. I'm just going to give you one verse on that, and then we're going to get right into it. Haggai chapter 2, which is the third book to the end of the Old Testament. Haggai 2. It's another famous verse on economics. And the reason I'm giving this to you is, uh, I don't want to give teaching. There's many of you could give a good teaching on giving. I want to give uh, testimonies. That's what this uh, these sessions are about. Testimonies. Yeah, there it is. Haggai 2. Okay. Now, Haggai 2, now, you know, it's only two chapters, and, and it's about building the house of prayer, and so being a house of prayer guy is really tempting, but I'm not going to. I mean, the context is building the temple, the, which, which the Lord named the house of prayer for all nations. That's what he called the temple, but we're not going to go there. Ooh, okay, verse 6 of chapter 2. Here's what the Lord says. And it's in context to building the temple. It's in context to the prayer movement in that day and in the end of the age. Verse 6, he goes, I'm going to shake everything, everything that can be shaken, everything. 
And he says that that means the, the heavens, the atmosphere, the earth. And he goes, verse 7, I'm going to shake all nations, mean all, A-L-L, 262 nations. All, every political institution on the earth is going to be moved by divine activity in a way they probably won't appreciate. Why? Because here's why. Because uh, the nations of the earth are trusting, unstable, unreliable realities. And God's going to show them as unreliable. That's, that's the big point. The point of it is, the believers and unbelievers are looking to all these, their seven realms of life mentioned. They're looking at, at different ideas related to these seven big realms of life, and they're unstable in themselves, and yet even God's people and the unbelievers are, are looking at them as stable, trusting in them. The Lord says, I'm going to shake them, show that they're not stable. I'm going to cause you to be completely discombobulated if you're trusting in them. Uh, basically, kick the props out. Then you're going to look around, you're going to grope, and you're going to find what is stable. You're going to trust in that and find salvation and a fascinated heart and eternal life. So it, it's really a fantastic uh, motive of God's heart. He says, I'm going to shake all the nations too. So he's going to shake the heavens. That's one. That's all the atmosphere and the stars. And I mean, when the sun gets shaken, that's one of the big ones. The earth is going to be shaken. Earthquakes. The sea. That's, uh, you know, you know, all of that. The dry land. Uh, you know, that's the dry land. Okay, and all the nations. Okay, now here's the, here's the next one that's going to be shaken. Here's the next one that's going to be shaken in verse 7. Uh, uh, is, and they shall come. Here it says in the New King James. It says it slightly different than the NIV, but this is such an excellent uh, statement here in the New King James. And then they, that means all the nations, all 262 nations, they shall come to a man. His name is called here. Why, one of uh, my favorite titles of Jesus, he's called the desire of all nations. So call that the harvest. And the institution that's going to be shaken by that is called the church. Because the nets are going to break first. The church thinks we're ready. Beloved, when 300,000 new converts come suddenly into the church of Kansas City, the church of Kansas City is going to say, we're a mess right now. This harvest, it's portrayed positive, and it is, but it will shake every relig religious institution because not only are those that billion plus going to come into the church, they're going to be leaving other religious institutions. It's going to be really shaking and mad, glad, and sad in every combination you can imagine when that happens. Then he says, I'm going to fill uh, my temple with glory. And when the Lord begins to put the anointing upon the people of God, again, as, as they function in the spirit of prayer, the glory, it's going to rearrange the whole order of God's kingdom. And that's a shaking. That's, that's wonderful there. But the, 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 coming, the way that will come down will have a lot of bruises and surprises in it because the power base is going to shift even in the midst of God's people when the glory starts resting on people that are, that are of no account in the kingdom of God right now in the eyes of men. And those that are of great account don't have the glory on them. It's going to get really uh, uh, perplex uh, perplexing for just a moment there. Okay. Then, verse 8, in the midst of this, and really for this, there's going to be a transfer of wealth. The silver and gold is going to be shaken. He's going to shake that too. And when he says the silver and gold is mine, uh, what he means is I'm going, to, I'm going to manifest my complete ownership over all the money that everybody has. I'm going to show the earth it's mine. You know, you know, it's not an accident that God gave the oil of the earth to Islam. That's, God didn't say, you know, the Father didn't say, Jesus, oh my good, the way they spread out the oils with the other guys. Oh, no. Sorry, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, you know, I was thinking you guys would branch out to the left. You went to the right. No, the oil is there on purpose. And the billions represented in that oil is there on purpose. And the Lord says, I'm going to show the world the, the trillions. It's mine. It's not theirs. I'm going to show everybody it's mine. And I'm going to show the world that the church's money is mine. And I'm going to show the world that all the money is mine, and it's going to shock everyone when I bring it into a new arena, the manifestation, the realization that the money's mine, and I'm going to use it for the harvest. And he ties together the harvest of verse 7 with the, the, with the manifestation, the money is his. Beloved, remember the God that we come to. Remember, he gives power to heal the sick, raise the dead, and gives power to generate wealth, and there's going to be a transfer of wealth. 
It's going to transfer within the religious institutions, including the church. It's going to be transferred from one group to another. And uh, some people will be in both groups, but many people won't. And it's, this is one intense couple verses here. But it ties the harvest to, uh, to uh, I mean, the shaking and the transfer of wealth to the harvest. It's going to be supernatural. It's going to be dramatic. And I want to be right in the middle of it. And I, I don't mean in the middle of the whole global thing, but in right in the middle of the will of God. I mean, the globe's too big for any, any one little person or one little group, but uh, we want to be right in the middle of our portion of it. And here's what we want to do right now. And I've said this for some years to some of you have heard that we, got, we must be developing our history in God as the God of wealth. It, it, we don't want to wait till the shaking starts and say, hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. Between now and the end of the month, I'm going to develop a deep history with the intimacy with the God of wealth. And, and, and when I mean uh, develop history with the God of wealth, I don't mean so that every individual in the church will be wealthy. That's not true. But wealth will be released in the right hands so that the harvest is released. Now, the Lord doesn't need the money for the harvest. He's chosen to do that. He wants it because he wants more intimacy and more drama by that choice. But uh, there was a time, some time ago, when I began to see money, when I began to see money, I began to see souls. Beloved, it is a radical paradigm shift when a million dollars to you means souls and not A, B, C, D. It's a radical change in you when the prospect of, of, of uh, somehow entering into $5 million next year, next month, next week, whatever, instantly impacts you as, oh my goodness, the amount of people that, oh, over here and over uh, oh, in Asia, oh my, whoa, this is going to really be something. It's a radical change when the people of God see money and they instantly see souls when they see money. Because it means workers in the harvest, and I mean souls coming in. And if you're not there yet, just ask the Lord to, to uh, gently transfer you over to there, because the Lord can do it gentle or he can do it rough. Ask him for the gentle transition. Say, let me see money as souls, not money as, you know, a little bit of the overflow goes to souls. See it as a means of the God of wealth wanting to bring the harvest to the desire of all nations, which is Jesus himself. Now, the way the Lord's going to do this is going to be, again, you couldn't chart it out if you tried. The, the, the seven different areas that are going to be shaken from the, the little uh, ones in authority to the international ones in authority to all the levels within those seven spheres. Oh, my goodness. It's going to get so dramatic. Dramatic is the word. Supernatural is the word. Surprising is the word how the transfer is going to happen. And the Lord's going to see to it that it gets into the harvest. And again, he doesn't have to. He wants to just as part of intimacy with his church. Some of you are going to get uh, uh, divine creative ideas. You know what? You're one idea away from a billion dollars. You're one idea from a billion dollars. Joseph, in Genesis 40 or whatever it was, 40, 41, he was one idea away from a billion dollars. One night he went to bed. He didn't have the idea. He woke up with the idea. Seven years of famine. I mean, seven years of plenty. We're going to store it. Seven years of famine. The king believed him. One idea. He said, I got one idea. I didn't have it at 10 o'clock last night. I had it at 10 a.m. this morning. That made him billions of dollars. One idea. You are what? I don't care how little guy you are. You're one idea away from a billion dollars. Now, obviously, there's work and process and a couple prison sentences in the spirit and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's all that kind of stuff too. I mean, we, we, the whole Bible goes along with that billion dollars, but, uh, but my idea is King David is a little Bethlehem boy. I mean, little Bethlehem, he's just kind of on the back side of the hills of Bethlehem playing his guitar. He is not going to get an education, uh, in the way we understand it. He's just a little Bethlehem boy, just out in Nowheresville. And he becomes a man that, I'm just making this number up, it's actually more than this, who gave a billion dollars to the prayer movement by the time he was 70. If you were to talk to him at 15 years old, David, using our, our, uh, our uh, numbers, David, what, what are you going to be when you grow up? Uh, a shepherd, I guess. I'm going to get, a, you know, I got seven older brothers. I get an eighth of this flock that I'm taking care of myself. It's small enough to where I can handle it, but we're going to divide it up in eight, eight pieces. I get an eighth of it and, and a little couple acres over there. Well, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome when they're mine. All eight of them are mine, you know. Uh, David, did, 
what, what, what would you say if you could fast forward, you're 15 now, when you're 70 years old, that you get, you've given a billion dollars to the prayer movement? David would say, well, well how, eight or 20 sheep? I mean, how many sheep am I going to get? Am I like 50? Am I going to break 100? No, no, this, no, it's not like that at all. My point is, it doesn't matter who you are, where you grew up, what you know and don't know. If the Lord has set it up, and he hasn't set up everybody to do this thing, but... Uh, I mean, at this level, but I'm telling you, some of you are from nowheresville without a chance of it, and you're like a David, and it's going to happen, and it's going to happen. Now, a lot of people are just expecting offerings, free will offerings. I love free will offerings, and I love the the billionaires, you know, giving a couple hundred million in one shot, and God's going to have his servants do that, but I don't want to think of it all as, as receiving offerings. I said, Lord, I, I want to be in this David swirl. I, I want to receive a couple hundred million in offerings. Why not? But I want to generate a hundred or two hundred million. I, I'm as, I'm as weak and unsuspecting as David was. I, I you know, I want to get going on a few things. I want to generate it myself as well as receive offerings from around the earth. I want to be one of the biggest givers in the movement that I'm part of the leadership of. I mean, I want to generate it. And the Lord's been uh, giving us these different businesses. We're calling them bookstores and, and music companies and a number of other things. And I am absolutely confident we're going to generate out of these kingdom businesses that will be based in the center of the IHOP world. There'll be about, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of five or ten of them, but the Lord says, uh, put a couple zeros on that. But whatever. My point is, I'm not just looking for offerings. I'm looking to generate it through kingdom businesses and not just Christian products either. I'm saying, Lord... I could stand to tap into a little oil thing here or there, and, you know, why couldn't I own the oil well? You know, the guys that own them now didn't make oil. You made oil. They just were born one day. I mean, you own oil. Why can't I own some of that oil? And he says, that, that's the way I like you thinking. Meaning, I mean, for real, it, it's, it's not about I don't look at me and think little dumb Mike. I look at big strategic God who's already figured out the end of the game before the game began. And I said, hey, I'm in. I'm in all the way. Let's go all the way. I'll give a couple hundred million from these businesses. I'll be one of the biggest givers at IHOP. How, what, why not? And then we'll take a couple hundred million in offerings and a couple hundred million in other ways we don't think about. There's uh, investments. There's favor. There's agriculture. I mean, the days are coming when the crop thing is going to be really important in a way we're not thinking. Anyway, ec- uh, prosperity is relative. Because I'm going to tell a couple stories. When I was 18 years old, getting a $30 miracle was stunning. And it had the wow factor. worked. I mean, $30. I made $35 a week uh, as a youth pastor. And uh, I mean, man, when I gave somebody $30, I did it a couple times. It was like, whoa, this is like really, you know, stretching it out there, you know. And, and another person, it's 30000 You know, that's the wow factor. Another person is $30 million, Another person is $30 billion. It doesn't matter because it's all a, a grain of sand to God. It's a peanut to God. It doesn't matter how many zeros. It's not like God uh, looks at the zeros and goes, whoa, this is going to be a tough one. It's no problem. And it's just wherever he places you and where he moves you, he might move you five levels beyond and five zeros in another realm. It, he can do that in a minute. He's done it to his servants all through history. Why not now in the hour of the great shaking? Why not now? Why not be a Joseph, a little Jewish slave boy, a little Jewish slave boy in Egypt? Why not uneducated little Jewish slave boy? Why not you be the billionaire in Egypt? Why not be the little guitar player out in the backside of the hills of Bethlehem? Why don't you give a billion to the prayer movement? That, those are the kind of guys that, that, that do it. Why not? It's the God that we're serving. It's the God we're serving. I'm going to give you uh, just a couple of words, one, two, three, four, five, just kind of lay them out there. You've already heard them, except for one or two of them, and then I'll reference so one or two of them tomorrow the next day. Cairo, Egypt, back in September 82. This is the one, two, three, four list here. He says, I'm going to give you the wealth of the nations, but he tied it to the Great Commission, the wealth of the nations. He spoke that in that awesome experience. August 75, again, I don't have them in order, when the angel visits Bob Jones, and that's that uh, that watershed experience, which his entire life actually references that angelic visitation when the Lord says he's going to make Kansas City a city of refuge. And he says, uh, uh, tre- what, what, whatever the exact word is, but uh, just uh, m- it means 
unimaginable wealth is going to be generated in Kansas City. The angel told him that wealth beyond anything you could imagine. I can't remember the exact phrase right now. Wealth is going to be supernaturally generated in the city. The angel told Bob and told him to go tell the people. The, uh, the uh, uh, experience with, uh, with the bus. Remember, the bus is, is going, the Lord's leading, and he turns around and gives Noel Alexander $1,000 and says, I'm going to make it a million. And then uh, the million's going to turn eventually. The million's going to be multiplied multiplied a thousandfold to a billion and it's talking about this place this people this city the people of god in kansas city i'm believing for a billion dollars a thousand dollars a thousand fold souls and a thousand fold of that million dollars the lord says i'm gonna give you the i'm gonna give you a thousand then i'm gonna multiply it times a thousand and then i'm gonna give you a million to give away to the nations and we did it we gave 1.2 million in one offering he says now i'm gonna multiply that and let you give it again to the nations and reap souls i said i'm in this was a supernatural thing i am in i'm in for the billion may 23rd when the lord uh, during the solemn assembly and and that f- the fire of God hit my hands and, and, uh, and I had the dream that night and the next day, uh, the Lord visited Bob Jones. He had Jehovah Rapha, no disease known to man. And, and, and the, and the verse, Matthew 10, 8 was given to me and to Bob Jones that freely give, freely receive. And the idea is that what the Lord communicated to Bob was there's going to be, uh, again, I can't remember the exact uh, adjectives of this, but in this, just indescribable wealth is coming when the, when the healing start and it has to go to the harvest. It was, it, it, I mean, the, the warning was it has to go to the harvest, but the promise was it's coming in. The prophecy, that, I mean, the, 50, the 50th night of, of this seeking the Lord time, which is the 12th night of these uh, uh, hearing the testimony, I'm going to give what I call, the, it's the most significant prophecy we've ever received. I call it the blueprint prophecy. And in that, the Lord says over and over, wealth beyond what you can imagine is coming to your, this people. Uh, August 2000, the Lord sp- speaks to Paul Kane when he's on Shiloh and he ta- gives him the number 1 billion. 1 billion. And so that, that's just a list of them right there. Not that you can remember all those. Okay, how's it going to happen? I tell you, it's going to happen in a way that wows the people of God. Well, you know, you could say it, it's going to happen in a way to where the Lord gets glory. But I tell you, the way he gets glory is by his people being wowed and lost in him. He's going to do it in a way. There's going to be a faith process. There's going to be testing. There's going to be dark moments. There's going to be prunings. There's going to be the prison sentences in the spirit. All David had a couple of them. Joseph had a couple of them. If we're going to go to David and Joseph, don't forget the prison sentences in their life story. Where they were tucked away for a while and it got a little dark for a minute or two. And then suddenly it got light. Then it got dark again. It happened that time a couple rounds for each of them before they were giving these billions away at the end of the story. But uh, how? And the Lord says, it's not going to just be one day you wake up and everything you touch turns to gold and then you're never... I'm going to wow you all the way through it. I'm going to wow you incrementally throughout the entire process. But I tell you, here we are right now. We're in a, a, you know, a time of need. And again, it's need small N. It's not capital N. We're... We need $175,000 in the next two, three, four weeks. And so I'm just sitting there praying about it. And I'm saying, Lord, I'm going to kick into the gear, the sure gear, the real gear that I know works. You know, I, I know, you know, you can do pledge cards and I'm not against pledge cards. You can do this. You can do newsletters. I'm not against that. Make phone calls. Okay, actually, one or two guys did. Uh, that's cool. I like that because the Lord uses those means because even those have lines of love connecting and all kinds of good things happen. So don't write those off. But when I really... Get in a pinch. I want to do the David style. Psalm 31, 5. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Let's throw ourselves into. Let's into God's hands. Let's get God in the battle like now. The, the for sure way to do it. Let's take a big offering and give it away. And let's lean into the uh, giving heart of God and release giving. Let it drip down like dew all over everybody. Let's Let's do the... And we got to get this thing settled. So, uh, you know, I want the fast version. So let's lean into this thing. Let's go for it. Let's just get God right in the middle of the battle. And I tell you, you can't afford not to have God in the crisis when the crisis at the end of the age is about to start escalating. You you want a history. You don't want to wait till the night before to cram for this test. You want a history in that hour. When things are crumbling and shaking and moving, we want to look at the Lord and to the people that are wanting to find rest under our shade tree. I think of Psalm 1. You'll be a rest for the for all these young ones. We want to stand there with a root system of reality here, not saying, 
You know, I heard a sermon once about that one verse. I mean, I know it's real because God's true. And, and all the young people that are there going, oh, gee, we were hoping there was going to be a little bit of shade here. <laughs> this feels like a hot sun to us. Are, are you experimenting right now? Well, they told me to do this years ago. I never really did. But that verse, it's got to be true. No, we want a root system. We want to stand unmoved in the hour when things are shaking. We want to be a shade tree to multitudes, especially this young harvest. And we want to say, listen, we have, we have stories that go way back when God has never, ever done anything but fulfill his word 100%. And he wowed us every step. And, and then when we begin to move forward, there's a little dark moment there. And they go, oh, no, 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 there was dark, there was a dark parenthesis. Almost all the stories had a, a little parentheses. Don't worry. Oh, they do. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, like like one. Oh, no, no. I got a hundred of them. Oh, oh. There's a parentheses of the little dark thing go away. Oh, yeah, it does. Don't worry. Oh, okay, good, good. We're new at this thing. We just got saved, you know. We want to be able to be steady, 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 steady. We want to know how this thing works, not just because we read it, because we've experienced the God who's who's made it work. Okay, now, lest I be too high and uh, 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 falluting and too, uh, you know, uh, out there, I'm going to give a couple of personal stories aimed for the 20-year-olds. Okay, when I mean 20-year-olds, I mean whoever wants it. I don't care if you're 80 or you're 23. or I just say 20-year-olds because it's the easiest number to say. Okay, there you have it. You know, one guy says, I'm 21. Do I count? I go, oh, stop it. <laughs> But see, I'm, I'm, I'm knowing that these tapes and CDs are going to go and they're going to be in some young guy's car out in Afghanistan somewhere driving. He's going to hear this testimony and I, I want to, I want an arrow to strike them. That's that kind of thing I want to happen. I remember when I was about eight, uh, 16 to 20 years old. I'm just going to look at that time frame for just, just two or three quick testimonies. I'm not even going to really give the details. Uh, my uh, spiritual heroes were J. Hudson Taylor and C.T. Studd and George Mueller. And these guys were missionaries par excellence, 1800s, 1850s, uh, uh, all uh, uh, English. And they were, uh, these were men that they had two things going on. Number one, they had tremendous faith for supernatural release of money. And they used the money for the harvest. So it was two things. It was two things. And I, my spiritual leaders gave me those biographies. I didn't never heard of C.T. Studd. I mean, who ever heard of him uh, from America? He was like the Babe Ruth of cricket in England. So he's a, he's a famous uh, 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 cricket player over there in, in history. But so I read him because the guys over me said, read him. And oh, my goodness. And here's what was happening. My spiritual DNA was being formed by missionaries that believed the impossible and then gave it to the harvest. So if that's, you know, when the cement is, is wet and that's what they put in the cement and it dries, you kind of think that's how it is. It took me a few years to figure out they were rare ones in the kingdom. And, and as I got older and older, I says, wait a second, this, this was like, those are like some really rare books I, t- I, I stumbled into. I just thought that it was Christianity. And now I, I found out it is just Christianity, but, uh, it's a, it's a rare, uh, it's, well, there you have it. Okay. And, and these guys had this, this David thing. They attacked the need by sowing. They had this idea. Remember, David didn't just do it because he was nice. He did it because he understood God's heart. He wanted to, he wanted to dive into this dimension of God's personality, the giving dimension of God's personality. And it was, a, it was a, it was an act of warfare. It was an actual tactic in crisis David used. I mean, he was nice and generous occasionally as well, but he, he knew what he was doing. Along, along the way, and he got transformed in it. I remember when I was in my early days, it was so normal. Uh, we heard these stories, and we all read these books, and I don't know the number, maybe 20 or 30 times in those first five, six, seven years. I, I don't know. It's not like you count them. But I had money uh, the Lord released to me supernaturally. It, it, was, it was absolutely what we expected to happen, and it's what I expect today to happen. I, I remember just this, this simple little thing. I was 18 years old. I was leading these uh, a bunch of people to the Lord because the Jesus movement, they were coming in like crazy. How many of you remember the Jesus movement in the early 70s? They were, and no one had Bibles. Nobody had money for Bibles. So I said, okay, with my $35 a week salary, I'm going to go buy Bibles. So I set my heart. And I went and bought 500 little paperbacks. And uh, the bill was, I mean, it was astronomical. It was $301.24. I remember it vividly, three hundred one twenty-four. And my friends go, man, where are you going to come up with that kind of money? I said, I don't know. I mean, J. Hudson Taylor did it. And, and uh, uh, it was the day I was going to go pick them up. And I, everybody already claimed them. I mean, not all 500, but a lot of them were already given out. 
And three hundred dollars. I mean, that was gigantic. I mean, I I don't know if I ever had that much money in my hand when I was eighteen years old. At one time, probably I did. But uh, it, it seemed like a mountain to me. And it was the day of the day of, and I was supposed to pick it up at noon. It's a Saturday. I remember it. No money. And my friends go, "You got any of it? Like five bucks? You know, we could each throw in two. And I said, "That's going to get me up to nine. And everybody's expecting them at the meeting that night. And, a, and it, I won't go, go through the deal, but a check just absolutely in the weirdest position, uh, place came. I needed a, a $301.24. The check was three hundred one twenty five. I got the check, and I went, oh, oh, you're real. And the Lord undoubtedly said, that's the point, little guy. That's the point. Not the day after it was late. Not the day before it was late. It came right there. I had a 12 or 1 o'clock appointment. One cent. I just took it and flipped it over my shoulder. I don't know what that meant, but I remember I just went, Doop. <laughs> maybe some guy could use it, you know. But I remember uh, uh, some months later, I'm, I'm taking a ski trip. I'm about 18 or 19 years old. I'm taking a ski trip, and these two girls, they really want to go. They're new believers, and I got in one of those Holy Spirit good moods, and I said, I'll pay your way. It's 250 a person. It's $500. This is bigger than the three, but I had that three under my belt a few months back, that $300 thing, and it's two, 500 And, uh, I mean, it's the day before, nothing. And 500 was a lot because you had to get there. We drove all night, you know, the Colorado ski trip, youth group thing, and we get there. I'm the leader. And when you pay them, you got to pay them up front. And I don't have it. And nobody in my world makes over 30 bucks a week. And so it's like, I didn't know any like legitimate rich guys that made a thousand a week or anything like this. We didn't know any. And so, uh, it's the day before it's, it's uh, Friday and we're going to leave Saturday and then nothing, nothing. And then Saturday comes here. It is Saturday again. And, uh, I get a $250 check in the mail, never received uh, money in the mail ever. And I never told one person the need because the two girls would have been embarrassed and uh, because their families couldn't afford it and da 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 and nobody knew they were coming free. And so nobody knew. Not one person knew. And I and I get this check 250. I can't believe it. It's almost my record. My record's 30125. And uh I I go, this is unbelievable. It's noonish again. And so it's it's let's say it's nine o'clock, we're gonna do the all night thing. And it's nine and the girls are, the girls are in this van and some others in that van. And there's like six or seven of them in a van and I'm driving this van and they're in it. And we're going, I don't have the money and I'm nervous. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to get really taken to task when I get there. And, uh, a guy comes over to visit my mother and my stepdad and, uh, says, Hey, he says, what you got going out there? I go, Hey, uh, ski trip. We're going to Colorado. Unbeliever, total unbeliever. I mean, my, my uh, uh, father, he died when I was 18, and my stepfather had the same uh, habits and this frequented the same places. And uh, uh, they were uh, uh, bars and taverns. And, and I, I, again, I just love to go in those things. I just love to smell the atmosphere. I know that that sounds gross to some of you, but I just grew up in there. And so uh, when they had come around, this guy comes and says, hey, he says, boy, that looks like a lot of fun. He put his hand in his pocket and gave me two $100 bills. So I'm now at 450 Oh. I go, and the girls, I'm walking out the door. I'm $50. I can find that at a gas station. I'm going to the door. I'm going to the door. And the guy goes, hey, young. He goes, hey, come here. He says, let me give you 50 more. And he gave me 50 more. And I went, I got in there. And and, uh, my little co-pilot says, you got the money? I said, got the money. (laughs) Nobody knew I didn't have it. I went, oh, Lord. This is is really, really good. I remember uh, that. that's just little 18-year-old stuff. Don't wait till you're 50 or 40 and you got a good job. Do it with $301 when you're 18. Do it now. Don't start then. And there were a number of of little stories like that. And they just begin to multiply. I remember once when it uh, it was in the summer of 1983, I remember this lady was in a desperate need and she was just in pain over it. And I just did this crazy thing because I don't, I don't, I've never done this before and certainly don't uh, recommend doing it, but I just did it. And afterwards I went, oh no. She needed $550, so I put it on my MasterCard. I just said, here, take my MasterCard. She's crying, and I was thinking, oh, gee, you know. So I put it on the MasterCard. And so then, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of time goes by, a short amount of time, and I go to a, a Tuesday night service at our church here, right here at the first year that we started here in Kansas City. And this uh, couple comes up to me during worship, whispers at me, and I'm kind of like, hey, I'm trying to worship. And 
I'm so sick of now. I go, okay, come over there. I said, the Lord told us to give you $550. I went, incredible. I said, that's it, man. I just got, that was perfect. Not 580, not seven, not six. I went, oh God, this is so good. I go, this is fun. And the Lord says, I'm wowing you, I'm wowing you. I didn't hear that, but of course that's what he's saying. Then about a half hour later, another person, I mean, that's what, that's the point. That's, it's all about intimacy and about wowing us. He set the whole thing up. The timing is ex- so stunning. So uh, I'm sitting there. I, it's a half hour later in the worship, and this guy comes up and he goes, he goes, "Hey, bro, can you pray for me?" He goes, "What?" He goes, "I'm the, I got the most horrible news." Da 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 da. And he says, "I said, how much do you need?" He goes, "I need five hundred fifty dollars." So I take the 550 and I said, I just happen to have it on me. He goes, why do you got 550 on you? I just happened to. So I give him the 550 and he goes, oh, bro, you can't imagine. So at least I'm where I left. That's how I began the service. You know, it's seven. I was broke. It's 830. I'm broke. But it's the same. (laughs) You know, it's all the same minus 90 minutes. But I got, you know, that was kind of fun. I'm walking out the door. And a couple came running. One of the last ones out says, Mike, Mike, quick. Oh, we didn't think we'd catch you. We, we can't believe we're still here. We're in the children's ministry. We sold our car today for 550 and the Lord told us to give the money to you and not to the church. It's yours. And I went, <laughs> and I said, Lord, is there like a little ping pong ball going? Like what? I said, what is going on up there? And I go home. The, you know, uh, Diane says, hey, uh, you got this little receipt here, $550. I go, yeah, here's the money here. I said, I got the money for the $550. We had a little receipt in my pocket. And so uh, everything was fine. You know, it was just, but it, I could have skipped the whole thing. It's not like I did it because I thought, I didn't know. It just, you kind of, some things you just kind of do impulsively. But that 550, 550, 550, you know, and I mean, 55. And it just strikes me that 55 uh, comes up again in a minute because I've never put that together. Uh, till just now, and that's just for my pleasure. Okay, I remember uh, I, I'm counseling uh, this lady on the telephone, and she, it's uh, I don't give her any money, just so you know. And uh, it's 11 o'clock, and she's uh, crying, and she's in the church, and she says, "I have this need. It's f- uh, it's 11 o'clock. By five o'clock, if I don't have two thousand dollars, da 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 da." I talked to her about giving. I do you ever give? She goes, "Well, no, I can't afford it." I says, "No, no, 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 no. You can't afford not to." I go, "It's not about." sustaining the church budget no 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 you have to and so a few minutes later okay i will i said is this for real yes someone's at my door at the church office i said i gotta go i said i'll check in with you later i said you gotta make the commitment i I don't even want to pray with you until you make the commitment yes guy comes in he's a businessman from oblin park he's from a a, uh, a church denomination that doesn't believe in the gifts of the spirit. And he's been visiting two or three times. He goes, yeah, I just wanted to meet you. I just wanted to meet you. Him and his wife, young couple, but real, uh, doing real well in business. And, and I said, well, hello, my name's so-and-so. And he goes, yeah, we've heard you a couple Sundays. And hey, da 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 and, and the wife says, well, since we're here, could you pray for my husband? You know, that guy looks at the wife going. <laughs> and I said, sure. I go, you know, innocently. And I pray for him, make a long story short. And the spirit of the Lord starts moving on him. He's got a demon. And he starts, and starts doing that in his eyes. And the, and the wife gets kind of scared and looks at me. I said, it's okay. It's okay. She's going, honey, is everything okay? And I said, just, just, I said, you're going to like him a lot better when this thing is over. Because I don't know what you're doing right here, but I know what he's doing when he gets home. <laughs> he's got one of these little th- critters inside of him. I guarantee you, uh, he's not acting this way at home. And uh, this demon comes out of him, and he is really excited. She thinks he's going to be offended. She goes, no, honey, because she had tried to get him to come to the church. He goes, no, I love it. He writes me a check right there. He goes, I, I just, I'm so happy. He writes me a $2,000 check. So the lady calls up, and I call her. She calls me, whatever, and I'm checking in on her. And she says, I said, it's, it's uh, three or four by now, whatever, for the phone calls made. And said, hey, are you still big on that commitment? Are you still into that? She goes, yes, I I've been praying all afternoon. I don't care if it costs me everything. I'm going to give to God. Da, 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 da. I said, well, in that case, come pick up your $2,000 check. It's in my hand because here's what the guy did. He wrote it out and he was going to put the name of the church. He goes, no, he says, he says this. He goes, make it out to whoever you want. I don't even care about the tax credit of giving it to a church. Put any name in it you want. And he hands it to me. And so I put her name in it. She came. She goes, how did he know my name? I said, well, and I told the story. She went, what? And I said, if I was you, I would really stay steady. Because, see, the Lord will give you little jump starts, kind of get you going. And I said, you know, the, 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 uh, the glow of this will wear off. 
and you'll get another crisis. I said, this little jump start is to get you going in a history. Don't back off of where this thing is supposed to get you going. It's a couple years later, same deal. I'm talking to a single mother. She comes over. She goes, my car died. Now I can't go to my work. I only make $180 a week. This and that. And I'm behind the bills, 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 bills. And I said, you know, I don't want to look at your need. I, I appreciate your need. I really do. I'm not minimizing it. But there's a God who has so much money you can't even imagine. He likes you. He's lovesick over you. Are you giving? Well, no, I, I can't. I, so we figured out the $18 out of 108. I said, you got, that's bare minimum. That's Christianity 101. You, you start there. I said, you don't ever want to be satisfied there. You start there. That's the introduction to faith. And, and, and she said, yeah, but what about my car? And I said, listen, you can't afford not to. This is maybe four or five in the afternoon. And yeah, but, uh, uh, uh. and so she says, yes, we pray together. She, she leaves. It's Tuesday night. It's when we had our midweek service. I go to the midweek service. The lady comes to me. She goes, Mike, the Holy Spirit told me to give you my car. She, she goes, and I've already notarized it. And here's the title. It's yours. Put any name in it you want. I went, this is amazing. I go back home. The lady lives uh, in the neighborhood where, I, where we were all at. I call over. I go, hey. And I'm not going to tell her about the car. I go, where are you at on that giving $18? She goes, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Just like the gal a few years ago. She says, I'm going. So we wrote her name in it. She had a notarized car. She had it right there. It wasn't a great car, but uh, maybe a car worth $4,000 back then in the, you know, about 85. So it's a pretty good car now. I mean, probably about a $10,000 car now. But she couldn't believe it. She just started sobbing. I go, that's the point. That's the point for you to sob. And again, knowing the Lord a little bit, he might have said, well, Mike, I wanted to wow you in that story too. You know, you're the little guy I'm wowing too. I want to wow everybody with that story. You know, he wants the little child, the mother. Uh, he wants the girl's sister. He wants a ton of people wowed. The lady who gave it, I told her the story. She went, no, I heard God. I heard God. I mean, it's just everybody gets blessed. If you, if you dive into the middle of this thing, everybody gets blessed in it. Everybody does. I remember one time we were in a need and uh, in a personal need, and I went to Diane and and I made uh, 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 my my pay uh, was a thousand dollars for every two weeks. And I said, you know what? We have no money in the bank account. Da 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 da. I said I don't do this that often, but I think I want to give the whole thousand dollars away. I just want to do that because this isn't a reckless thing. Da 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 da. And she's watched it over the years. I gave that away. The very next day. The very next day, a guy calls and says, hey, Mike, the Lord told me to give you $1,000. And then I got some more money the next week or two or three. But but uh, it was just amazing. It, I just said, Lord, it, the guy didn't call me a week later. He called me the next morning. And the Lord's answer, I'm just wowing you. I'm, I'm letting you know I watch it. I watch every movement of all of the hearts of my people. I watch it. I set it up with the timing to wow you and everybody else involved. And I remember that was just so exciting for, uh, for our family and, and this and that. And, and, uh, uh, cause we'd have our family devotions and, and, uh, Luke and Paul and Diane, I'd be there and I'd sit down, we'd tell little stories and, and uh, we were notorious for never ever staying on track, you know, cause Diane used to say, we're on the lesson. And me and Luke and Paul, we were all over the world. I was telling them World War II stories and we read the book of Revelation and we had the little curriculum there. We laid it aside and told them Bob Jones stories. And, but anyway, we had a, a quite good time there for a few years. And, uh, and I remember that whenever I, because I wanted my sons to get zapped by this reality, I always told them the whole story. And, uh, even when I'd give the thousand dollars, when we had nothing, I said, I'm giving, I'm giving into this. So, so I had this little deal with them. I said, whenever I get money, I said, I'm going to tithe it to the Lord. Always even a gift. I'll tithe every gift to the Lord, but I'm going to do something more. I'm going to tithe it to you guys. And I'd get a $2,000 check and they'd get a $200 check. I mean, with it six years old. And I just said, I want to, abs- I want to wow them like Papa's wowing me. And they loved it when the check came in. I mean, they go, dad, did you check the mail today? Didn't you give some money last month and anything came in yet? And they started, I mean, $200 was like a million to a six year old. And I really gave it to them. It struck them. I mean, it was like double zeros compared to an adult. And it, it, it marked them. I mean, it marked them. So, you know, after some time, you know, uh, they would have six, seven, eight hundred dollars in the bank account, you know, just off of the tithe of, of, of uh, little miracles happening. And they loved it because I'd always tell the whole story. I wanted them to get this in this genetic, in this genetic. So a need came up and Luke uh, said, I want to just unload everything. I just want, I want to do the same thing. I just want to go all the way. And I said, 
Well, Luke, you know, here I am, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a good one at, at being a son, but I, here I am the dad, you know, I'm going, uh, why don't we just give half of it? You know, I want to give it all or, or whatever the amount was. It was a, it was a significant part of it. And I said, well, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. And he gave it. And then he said, okay, that's it. And I said, Luke, our next day we had our, our little family devotion time. And I said, Luke, I don't want you just giving it. I want you to engage faith. What do you want? I want you to give it and believe there's an action and a reaction by a real person called Yahweh, God. It, it's not you gave it and you, oh, well, I did it. I, pa- I grit my teeth and passed the test. No, I said, I want it to be a, a dynamic that connects with your little heart. I said, what do you want? I don't know. I said, no, we had our little prayer thing we'd go through and I'd write, uh, write down little things, you know, and so if, if they got answered, we'd have it there. And <laughs> so he goes, I don't want nothing. I said, come on, give me something. Right in the book. He goes, something that's just real cool. Something real cool. I said, I, I said, I go, come on. He goes, no, I don't, nothing goes in my mind. And it was just the perfect answer. Uh, a week later, uh, this is, uh, uh, he's about uh, 11 years old now. It's the hour for about uh, three years. I was traveling with John Wimber and Paul Kane all around the world. And, and John, I mean, we were going, you know, from South Africa to Australia, New Zealand, to, you know, here, everywhere, you know, over in Europe and Singapore, just everywhere. And so he said, I'll pay your family. You know, I just, I want you to be there and I'll pay your family to go. And so they went on a lot of the trips. Some they didn't, some they did. And so uh, about a week later, you're not going to believe this. We get in the mail. It says Luke Bickle. And it's the main airlines that I work, that, that I travel on. It says gold card, Luke Bickle, free upgrades on every flight. I look at this and Luke says, what? What is it? I go, it's a gold card. He goes, cool. What is it? I go, no, this is serious. I go, in my business, this is serious. It takes 100,000 miles to get one of these. I go, and uh, I said, Luke, I don't want to break your little heart. I explained it first to him. And I said, this can't be real. So I actually called up and said, da-da-da-da. And I go, well, our records say 100,000 miles. He gets guaranteed upgrades on everything. He just does. And, you know, uh, do you want to talk to the boss? I go, no, 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 no. Because I had this feeling I'd been talking to the boss long before that. And so we went on these trips. And, oh, Luke, man, he's up there. His little 11-year-old chest out, feet up, just kicking back, traveling around the world. We're all back, you know, in the nosebleed section. And Well, I had a gold card, but, I mean, one gold card, four people in the family. That's politically incorrect. I just buried it. I said, no gold cards on the trip. We all go together. There's nobody. I'm not even going to go. I'm leaving it at home because it, we tried it once and it was a disaster. So, so Luke's the only one up there, chest out, man. Just, I'll have some more apple juice. No, make that orange juice. We're back there on water. You know, I mean, he, he brought the chocolates back, showed them. I mean, it's so intense. And I said, Lord, this is, this is like really cool. We wrote down something cool. I go, this is cool. This is cool. And it, it impacted all of us. And all of the little 10-year-olds go, no way. You didn't go first class. He goes, yes, I did. I gave that money. And I said, I want something cool. And we put it down there. And I got something cool. And I travel first class. <laughs> that, that, was, that was so cool. <laughs> I'm going to tell you another one or two. Then I'm going to get to one or two church ones because i got a few more minutes here. <clears throat> but uh, I remember when uh, I, you know, I was 22 years old. Diane was 22 years old. We're getting married. and she, no, She's 21. I'm 22. And I'm fresh off of biographies and about 20 or 30 of these stories. Okay, I've got about 20 to 30 little one, $301.25 stories. i got about 20 or 30 of those. I mean, Diane, she's a new believer. She's never heard of C.T. Studd or J. Hudson Taylor or George. She's never heard of anybody, never heard of Brainerd or John G. Lake or nobody. She just met the Lord a few months earlier. And she goes, I don't know all these stories. And so, so the day comes and, you know, uh, you know, we're talking about our lives. And she says she's been waiting her whole day her, for years for this, for seven years. She goes, well, how much do you have in the bank? have in the bank. I go, what do you mean? She goes, how much do you have in the bank? Cause she was leading into the question of, well, then how much do you have in the bank? It never even occurred to me. I go, 
Oh, I don't have any money. The bank always gives my money away. She goes, well, what do you mean? I said, you know, you know, Jay Hudson Taylor, that kind of stuff. And, and, and I'm for bank accounts, by the way. But uh, at that hour, I wasn't. And I am now. I think they're biblical. I think you save, you invest, you spend wisely. There's all kinds of principles. And I didn't have them. The Lord was training me for something else in that moment. And she says, I have $5,000. And it was, I mean, this is something we really had to work on later. It pained me. It hurt me. I go, five thousand dollars she goes yeah they went i mean we didn't do marriage class or none of that stuff and so i went why she goes what do you mean why i go i said have you ever little spiritual arrogance here i go have you ever had money ever the lord ever give you money she goes i don't even know what you're talking about i've never heard of that oh man she sure is cute i really do want to marry her (laughs) but i'm looking she's so brand i mean she's only been said a few months i'm thinking hmm I said, this was a conviction to me. I mean, this was painful to me. I said, I, I said I'm going to marry you no matter what, but let me get one thing straight. I said, this isn't really an ultimatum. Cause, but is there any way we could give the money away? So we get married, come home from the honeymoon, we give the $5,000 away to mission. So it's zero, zero, zero. And I go, ah, now I feel good. Now I feel comfortable. <laughs> I go, now I feel like I have a place to go get some money now. And she went, you are the weirdest thing. And, and, uh, uh, and, and I had a little bit of arrogance in it, but it really was a, uh, a spiritual download season where the Lord was saying, you know, we'll do wisdom later. I want to convince you of something right now, so we'll make you balance later. And so, so we make $12,000 a year. I got a, a, a raise. I'm at a, a big church now, and I'm youth pastor. We're making 12000 a year, and I'm double tithing. Of course, we can't really make it. But I'm an adamant double tither. Adamant. I said, I'm not going to be one of those little measly 10% people. Forget it. We're 22 years old. I said, I'm not even going to start there. We're starting at 20 and we're going to work our way up to 99. And, or, you know, of course I didn't believe that, but just being one of the books said it. And so, uh, (laughs) we gave the 9,000, we gave the $5,000 away. And and that she was said, I'll do it. I'm with you. Let's go for it. She goes, I, you know, I just don't understand all this, but I'll go with you. So in the next nine months, now, here's what happens. Here's the dark moment. The next nine months, we are we have $5,000 stolen from us in the next nine months. We gave $5,000, and the answer was $5,000 stolen. And the way it was stolen, because we had like 10 guys live with us, and one guy stole the couches. One guy stole the car. <laughs> one, I mean, one guy, we went home, and the two couches were gone. He sold them for $800. On Sunday morning, he slept in and stole the couches. One guy made $400 worth of phone calls, got reimbursed from his company, kept the $400, and moved. So in nine months, it ended up $5,000. Diane says, now tell me this story again about how... I said, well, it's not working right now. So I'm a little perplexed, too, by this $5,000 deal. And then what happens is that uh, we have this house... Uh, that uh, my brother, uh, Pat, who uh, mo- many of you know of him, who was totally paralyzed, he had uh, like $30,000 of insurance money, and he lived with us, and uh, it was his, or some kind of money, it was his down payment. Okay, and so now we're going we're gonna to go buy another house. We're going bu- to go buy another house. And so, because so it, it's so clear to do it, and I won't tell you that story. It's just so clear. I don't even like the idea, but it's so clear to do it. I cannot deny it. Everybody agreed with it. And so, uh, this is in March. So on August 31st, we have double payments. Four months in the closing. And we have double payments August 31st. And my little, my brother's $30,000 little down payment thing is now we got two houses and so little money. And we've had $5,000 stolen from us in this nine month period. And, and March, April, May, June, Diane says, now this is going to happen. And I go, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. July, August 10th, 15th. 31st doesn't happen. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little depressed. She goes, you know, tomorrow is the double payments and we, we were ripped off $800 again last week by one of your friends. And <laughs> so, uh, it's August 31st. We go to church. It's a Thursday night. I remember we go home. It's 1030. We're in bed. She goes, well, it's September 1st and an hour and a half. I said, we still have an hour and a half. I didn't believe anything about that. Just so you know, I said, we still got an hour and a half. <laughs> she said, we have double payments tomorrow and we just got stolen $800. And, ah, this is weird. A lady calls. Mike Beckle. Yes. Are you the youth pastor at that big church? Yeah. She goes, I'm moving in town 
and uh, I, I'm two or three hours out. The truck's there tomorrow. Do you have a house for sale? Somebody, a friend of a friend of a friend told me you do. She goes, yes. She goes, I want to buy it. She goes, sight unseen. I have this kind of money for this reason. I want it. I'm desperate. I want to buy it right now. Uh, and I told her the price. She goes, fine, sight unseen. It's mine. Are you, is this a promise from you? I go, it is a promise. <laughs> I go walking into the bedroom. Diane says, who is that? I said, of course, I put the old chest out. I said, well, there's men of God and then there's men of God. <laughs> no, I, I was, and the truth is I, I joke about that. I really didn't. I was shocked. I was shocked. And the Lord's, of course, saying something like, you know, I, I, I do want to wow you, but I would rather, rather you kind of get more believing I do this. I was shocked because now the numbers were not 300. It was 30,000. It was my paralyzed brother's insurance money. Like, that's bad. That's bad. Cause, uh, and so it goes through. So we get this crazy deal that I don't even want, but it happens. It was such a God thing. It's five acres, two houses. I have, well, just give me a minute on this. I have 18 guys living in all the houses from the whole clan. They're from all over the coast and everywhere. So they're all, we're all in this five acre piece of property. They're all new disciples studying the word, you know, the whole deal. And, uh, we're there. We're all there together. And, uh, f- eight, uh, 18 months later, it's in May of 1980 because the insurance, uh, I mean, the interest rate was so bad. It was 15% for a house, 15%. And so, uh, the leaders of the church said, we want you to do a church plan at the other end of town. And it was clear us. So we had to go out there. So we had to sell it. So I put a for sale by sign owner. The f- first guy one day calls up on the phone. I sold it in seven days, actually. But uh, a- actually, two different people called. But who cares? But seven days, I made 55,000 profit on what I put in 18 months ago. I, I can't believe it. The guy goes, I'll take it. And I said, I just made up a number. He called me up. And he said, da, da, da. I just made a number up, a, you know, a crazy number. And he said, I can't remember, you know, what it was. And it was 55000 over what I bought it 18 months ago, you know, in May 80 when the interest rate was 15%. And he goes, I'll take it. He goes, will you sign right now? He goes, I'll give you $5,000 earnest check. I went, I'm 24 years old. I'm five. Okay. And so I walk away. I walk away and I have uh, $55,000. It was a real fast closing several weeks and. And the Lord said, the 5000 is for what the guys that stole from you one by one. And the 50000 is for the money you gave in missions. I put a zero on it. Will you? And so we got 50, 55000 above my brother's 30000 So we go get another house down in South uh, Kansas City. <clears throat> I mean, St. Louis. A year or two, three goes by, whatever, three years goes by. And we move to Kansas City. And Lord says, go. And the moving date's uh, November 1st. And so... I mean, these houses, things are happening. They're happening. And so, uh, <clears throat> same thing. Uh, June, July, August. Of course, no way in the church knew we were moving. We, we didn't tell. The, I mean, we announced it to the elders somewhere in the summer on that, uh, in the summer. And so now it's September, October. It's 30th, 31st. And we, now we got a ton of money in this one. <laughs> now we're moving to Kansas City. <laughs> and it's 7th. 30 on Sunday night, October 31st, we're, we're filling the, the U-Haul tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, a whole bunch of people, and it hasn't sold. October 31st, 7.30 at night. I mean, we're moving the next day, but it's happened time and time again. Lady calls, Mike, surely you've sold your house. No, I want it. She goes, is there any possible way I can move in tomorrow? I said, no, we're moving out, but how about the next way? She goes, oh, praise God, praise God. She goes, I want it. And what's all said and done in the three houses, I mean, the, the house on the August 31st, couple of years back, the 55,000 one and the other one, we made a hundred thousand dollars profit in like four and a half years, a hundred thousand dollars. And, uh, I wasn't even into that. I said, Lord, I'm not even, I don't, I'm not trying to be a real estate guy. That's not even what I'm about. I'm trying to do da, 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 da. Uh, I'm not trying to be a hot shot by this next, next statement because it's not a really important thing to me, but I gave my brother his part and we took our big chunk because we made most investments and I gave a hundred percent of it. I said, we're moving to Kansas City. We're starting at zero again, just like St. Louis. And we gave it to, uh, I gave it to our guy and says, make sure it gets to Israel. I just want to make sure it gets in Israel somewhere. And we're starting at ground zero and I'm out of time and I have about 20, which I'm not going to tell you tomorrow. I'll put it on another time. I'll tell you about 10 or 20 phenomenal stories that happened in the church world that started, the prosperity started breaking out. But uh, here's the point I want to say. 
is that, uh, and I took too much time on these stories because I wanted to tell you those stories as well, the ministry ones, but I, I spent the time on the personal ones. I'll just take another session and tell you the ministry ones. I, I just need to do that. They are more dynamic, equally dynamic in the timing. See, the point is not the amount. The point is the timing. It was 7.30, October 31st. Nobody called. We're moving the next day. They call it 7.30. It's August 31st, four or five years or three, four years earlier. We got double payments tomorrow. The lady calls 10.30 that night. The number 55,000 profit. And the Lord, when we came to Kansas City, I said, let's, and Diane was very excited. I go, let's start like St. Louis. Let's go zero, zero, zero and take our chances with God. She goes, I'm totally into this. Let's do this. And so, uh, over the years, uh, a lot of things have happened. And just even in the last two years in IHOP, uh, you know, they were checking our bank statement for some reason and we had zero nearly, maybe it's two and a half years. And, uh, when Dwight came to me the other day and was talking about the, uh, us getting something. He says, you know, our net worth after just two years is $5.0 million. $5 million is the net worth. He goes, where did it all come from? And of course we've received $700,000 on two different occasions. And I've never told those stories. And just in the last couple of years, the things that have happened in the last couple of years, we've just never had the time to tell them what happened through the years at Metro and this and that. It is so clear. Well, here's what I'm really saying. The little 150 to 75,000 is nothing. It is nothing. The Lord says, why is it there? It's there for me to wow you. That's why it's there. It's, I want to wow all of you together in the process. This is money. You will be there and you will be in many, many places. We have multitudes of dreams of warehouses, shopping malls, airplanes, apartment buildings, restaurants. I mean, real ones. All of these things will be in our sphere for sure. This is true. The Lord will give us a billion dollars. This is for sure. There's not a question about this. And this little, uh, little, little amount in front of us is not, I said, I can't say desperate, maybe small D because the drywall guy might quit, but uh, you know, but not really, I mean, not, not really who we are together with God and what he's looking at and who we are to him, but he wants us involved. He wants us all wowed and wooed and telling our children and them telling their friends and the grandparents and the aunts and uncles whispering over the, you know, I mean, talking on the telephone. He wants everyone wowed by the journey. So the, the only wise thing I know to do, we got to get this thing done. So I said, let's just do what we've done a number of times. We've done this several times. Let's lean into it. Let's give the best we have and let's release it to where it cannot come back to us in the natural. Totally release it and throw ourselves into the heart of God into somewhere where God's building his kingdom. And, and there's a church in need. They're building the kingdom. They've got an excellent spirit. They're great people. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. And uh, the Lord's going to the Lord's going to wow us. Uh, one, one last story. When I was talking to Jack Deere the other day, I, I mean, like a year ago, and he was, uh, or one of the conferences, maybe some months ago, I don't know, whenever. And, uh, he says, you know, Mike, he goes, I've been close to you for some, what, 17, 18 years. He goes, I've never met a guy who's tried harder to be poor because these things keep landing. I said, no, Jack, I go, that's, that's not really true. That's not really true. I'm not trying to be poor. The truth is I want a billion more than any of the 10 guys we were talking about. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Not because I'm trying to be poor, because I really want to be rich. That's different. And when I see a billion dollars, I see souls. I see hundreds of millions of souls. And I said, and God's going to give me that billion dollars. And he's going to give it to us. He's going to give it to us as a people. Amen. Let's stand.